we're going to be talking to you about this experimental pilot tool that we're uh, working on. Uh, it's part of Media Cloud. Um, how many of you actually know what Media Cloud is? Raise your hands. Okay, so we won't. Yeah, so we won't go into the details. Uh, yeah, it's a project. It's part of the Berkman Center. It's this massive platform that has a database of uh, media sites. We collect a lot of uh, millions and millions of articles to try to better understand the media landscape. And uh, yeah, I'll just add on to that that it's so part of this aggregation of all of this content. But uh, the other is all of the tools that we build around that content. So there are a lot of APIs and tools that we use that operate on that and try and call insight out of it. And this is what we're going to talk about today is an example of one of those tools. So this is something we're calling a network of frames, for lack of a better word. If you have a better word, <laughs> please tell me. Um, and we'll zoom into this in a second, um, but I just wanted to get you give you the overview of the entire structure at first. So what this is, is a, um, a network. It's a tool for building networks out of um, online news media. And in this network, there are two things. There are media sources, and there are words that they use. So the way that we build it is by taking the top 100 most used words from each of the media sources. In this case, I think it's about 48 or so uh, media sources from the Gaza controversy. Um, and then what we do is we link all of the media sources with the words that they use. So you can imagine New York Times using the word rockets a number of times, and the Washington Post using the word rockets, and they're connected between, between they're connected by that word that they use in common. So it's co-occurrence of the most frequently used words. What I'm going to show you is the, the topography of this, just how it works and some of the features of it. And then Dali is going to go into looking at Gaza specifically through this tool. So probably very hard for you to read any of those <laughs> labels, but they are um, they're all media sources. These are media sources highlighted in the center of the network. Basically, what you're seeing is different colors representing different communities of discourse, and those are made up of different words that they use a lot in common. Um, it looks fairly dense, but we can pick into the details here. So if you look a little bit closer, you can see that some of them stand out in their own communities. That's because they're using a number of words that only they use the most. Um, Democracy Now! Is, a, is an example of something that has a discourse that's very different from a lot of the other kind of discourses. Um, and up to the right here, um, you can see a lot of the more highly interlinked media sources, meaning that they use a lot of the same words together. Um, and what you get in the center of the network is a more generic dialogue. One of the other features of this network is that you get to see the words that only certain media sources use a lot. And that's really valuable to distinguish them from the way that they talk about it, other, other media sources. What you see at the edges here is um, the further away from the center the word is, the less it's used. So the words that are superfluous or maybe just HTML tags that got in there by accident, they tend to fly all the way out to the edge of the network. The ones that are closer to the media source are the ones that are used more and that we can draw more insight from. Um, so you'll see this, if you go back to the original one, all in the periphery you can see the words that are unique to each of those media sources. So those are some of the ways that we explore this graphic. Again, sorry for the glare and everything else. Um, but what you're seeing here is uh, all of the words that they use highlighted. Um, right in the center is humanitarian, and you can see the, the purple area is more humanitarian, human rights type media sources. Um, those cluster all together, you can see those words um, kind of making up a, a summary of what um, they're talking about. Further over to the right, you can see more words like uh, weapons and terror and Abbas and clearly a different category of uh, discussion going on. This is just a zoom in of that um, to basically show you the dead center where if you're using words that everybody else is using, you end up in the center, right? So you get a, a really good sense of who's talking in the same way about this and who is far off um, using different dialogue, different, uh, different 
general vernacular of what's doing it. So that's the overall structure of the network, and hopefully that'll give you a groundwork for um, values. So the question is why? Why are we doing this? Um, you may have heard about what happened. Yeah, this kind of minor story that happened over the summer. Um, 50 days of ghetto war in Gaza, and almost everyone was covering the story. Uh, and you had so many different sort of aspects of it and, and angles to the story. You have Jazeera with their own sort of infographics and stories, New York Times reporting on a set of stories, Haaretz and, and the Israeli media reporting on another set of you know, stories as well. And so during the, over the summer, uh, what was, I guess, noticeable about all of this is the use of certain language. Um, you see, uh, I, my I, unscientific sort of point of view is that there was um, a lot of, for example, mentions of rockets or sir sirens sort of to whoever actually is kind of knows a bit about what happened over the summer or the conflict will notice that this is more of a frame that's that's referring to Hamas and the rockets raining down on Israel and terrorism. There's the other aspect with other words that, that sort of were key and significant like children, airstrikes, casualties. So there are a lot of different words that we're playing within those different media sources. And what we were trying to do here is to understand where these media sources lie using those words. So which communities, where do they lie on the spectrum? Is there a, a polarized spectrum? Is there a pro-Israeli, pro-Palestinian spectrum? And where does international US, UK media lie in that? So just to dive through this, what was interesting and what we found, and uh, keep in mind this is all preliminary initial findings. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this. But we uh, realized this is a, this map represents about 50 media sources, the top 50 most linked to media sources. So we're, we're basing the, the prominence on the linkage, on the link economy. And what we realized is that there are actually six distinct communities or clusters. One is mainstream media, which is the largest, and you have both Israeli and Palestinian in mainstream media. Uh, you have humanitarian human rights, all very, there's a humanitarian cluster and a human rights cluster. There's also a left wing news blogs like Democracy Now, um, Huffington Post. And then you've got a sort of maybe right wing Israeli military cluster as well. And I can show you, so, so if we go in, to, for example, the Israeli military. You'll notice that there's, for example, the IDF, Israeli Defense Force spokesperson, uh, IDF blog, again. And again, keep in mind that these are all sort of linked together based on the words that they're using. So if we go towards the humanitarian, you'll see that one obvious big word is humanitarian, and then we'll see that the organization is the UN and the UNRWA, which is the refugee uh, body for, for refugee Palestinians. Um, and, and a lot of the words that are being used are sort of like psychosocial, ambulances, um, a lot of humanitarian words. Again, this is an interesting the fact that we have six different clusters in it is an interesting find in itself because going back to the whole polls, different polls, we don't see one like pro-Israeli, pro-Palestinian poll. In fact, we see a larger conversation and it's mostly driven by mainstream media showing that it's a day-to-day -day news story. Uh, again, initial findings, we're hoping to uh, dig deeper into this and see what it tells us, and some of that sounds correct. Right, so I, just to point out a couple of things that we are intending to do with this, because there are a lot of different dials that we can turn here. Um, we've gone back and forth about handpicking media sources versus just taking the ones that are the most prominent in the debates. Um, when you're handpicking, obviously you're introducing your own biases into the analysis, so 
we go back and forth. Uh, getting a balanced Palestinian and Israeli group of media sources is something that seems desirable, but at the same time, it depends on what type of questions you want to answer. If you want to answer who is the most prominent in the debate, then maybe you want to take the people who have the most in-links to their stories. Uh, if you want to look at the way that those two communities discuss things, then you might have to. Um, building the ability to change the community size is something that we really want to do. This is oh, this gets a little bit technical, but basically you can tune the community detection algorithm to say, I want more or I want less communities. And what that allows you to do is to to tease out some of those more subtle communities. So you can imagine having a very small amount of communities, and you get the humanitarian, and then you get all of the mainstream media, and a lot of the different blogs get pulled into that. But if you turn the resolution up a little bit, and you start to see some of the smaller communities, you actually can start to see some of the things that Dahlia was mentioning. Um, and one of the things you didn't mention was that there's actually, there's not just a Palestinian cluster, if you turn the resolution up on those communities, you can actually see a number of different discourses going on just inside the, the Palestinian media sources. So that's a fascinating direction to go in with this. Um, we've been working with time slices, so that you can see how these communities change over time during what's happening. Um, so we have a whole timeline, I think. Uh, no. Okay. Um, right. So. We're going to splice it up by timelines. We're going to adjust the word count. This we used 100 words per media source, but that can change. And yeah, a couple of other things that we want to plot out uh, in terms of trying to describe the relationship between communities and the relationship between media sources. Uh, exactly what words do they use? And why? Why are they affiliated with these networks? Um, so I think that's, uh, that's our summary.